Hello, I got a message for the world. This could very well be the most important message you've ever heard. I just have to tell you that if you're not born again, you are not fulfilling your purpose of existence. You cannot understand God until you receive Christ. It is impossible. That's what distinguishes from the truth of the Word of God and a real relationship with God and every other man-made religion that there is. If you have not been born again, you will never understand God without being born again. Jesus came and died on the cross so that we could all be forgiven. And he did what no man could do. He lived a holy, perfect, pure life. And he died in our place for our sins so that we could be redeemed. And when you put your faith in Christ and you ask him into your heart sincerely, and you say, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Holy Spirit, come into my heart and just have all of me. When you surrender your heart to Christ, then your spirit, man, goes from death to life. And you can now understand the things of God. Now when you read the Word of God, you'll understand the Bible. And the Lord will begin to speak to you. He'll begin to minister to you. And literally, you will have a new life. Because the Word says that if anyone is in Christ, meaning if anyone has been born again, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And the Word also says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So once you're born again, the Spirit of Christ comes inside of you. And the greater one now lives inside of you. You're no longer in Adam, but you're in Christ. You're no longer a product of the flesh, but you're born of the spirit. Because Jesus said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. See, every human has been born of the flesh. We came into this world in this body. But not every human has been born of the spirit. And Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot even see the kingdom of God. And the word says that, no one knows the thoughts of a man, but the spirit that is in that man. Likewise, no one knows the thoughts of God, but the spirit of God. Therefore, you must have the spirit of God to understand God. Religion is not God. Therefore, in order to have a real relationship with God, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I am the one way. I am the one truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He is the door to heaven. He's the only way to... Igor, come on, tell him. Come on. This is my brother in Christ right here, Igor. Yeah. He's born again, set free, on fire for Jesus. Can't go anywhere with him without him praying for people. God healing him. God is good. God heals. We want to know that life. God heals hearts. He heals physical yeah. illness. There's nothing that God cannot do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I thought of for this video, this is my message to the world. Just yeah. to tell them about Christ. That that's just the beginning. Without Jesus, there's nothing. Without faith in Jesus, there's nothing, there's nothing no, else. No. Yeah. Jesus Christ is alive. The Word of God is very alive. And when you begin to spend time with God, your new man begins to develop and grow. And your gifts, the gifts that God has given you, because everybody has gifts, begin to, to expand. And God begins to use you to flow, to minister to other people um, at work. Uh, will give you wisdom in, in finances and in all the areas in your life. Mm -hmm. God is good. He is alive. Me and Kevin been seeing him just rock rock the world. Um, oh, we're just we're just seeing what the fasting does to Hallelujah. the flesh. You just end up wanting more of God. You get mm -hmm. sick of this world and the devil and how he controls people, manip manipulates people day by day, and everybody's a slave to this world. But when you get in the Word of God, when you start spending time with God, you begin to realize, hey, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. And I'm set free. And I have a purpose here on earth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God is good. So if anybody here is watching this video yes. and has any kind of pain in their body, any kind of pain in their body, back, wrists, whatever, I want you to put your hand on it right now, wherever it is, and pray with me. Jesus, I believe that I am healed right now because of what you did 2,000 years ago on the cross. It says, you bore our sicknesses and carried our pains, and by your stripes we are healed. When we confess the word of God, the, the Holy Spirit flows with power, and people get touched. People get healed. So right now, receive the healing. We believe. We believe. We stand, we're standing here for your yes. healing. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Heal. God is good. Start giving God the glory. Never. Say, I thank you, Jesus, I am healed. Wherever the pain is, I thank you, Jesus, I am healed. Thank Him for it already because He's done it 2,000 years ago. So today you can say, I am free. I'm no longer a slave and in bondage to this pain. That is, uh, I am free in Jesus' mighty name. He is good. 
is just rejoice. You are healed. Don't think about it. Don't try to understand it. Just yep. lift your hand and say, Jesus, I'm healed. Act the fool. Do whatever you have to do. Jesus, I'm healed. I'm healed. I thank you that I'm healed. No matter what you're going through, the best thing you can do is lift your hand and say, God, I love you. By I faith. glorify you, Jesus. You are everything to me. Because the truth is, if you have your heart set on Jesus and you have your mind set on Jesus and he is your focus, there is nothing the enemy can bring that is going to discourage you because your whole hope is on Jesus. It's when we take our eyes off of Jesus that everything begins to crumble, that everything begins to fall. Anytime you get, you cannot possibly behold Jesus and be in doubt and negativity and unforgiveness and everything else. Because once you behold him, you become as he is. So we have to focus on Jesus. You have to read your word every day. And the Lord will change our heart where it's not a religious duty, but it's the favorite thing we have to do. When your spirit man begins getting fed, like Igor was saying, when you start fasting and you put your, you put your flesh to death, you're putting your flesh on the altar. You're offering your body a living sacrifice. The word says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Offer your body a living sacrifice. And if you just begin to surrender yourself and, and worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Listen, if your pastor is not in line with the word, get in line with the word of God because the word of God is right. Your pastor will not be the one judging you on judgment day. Jesus is the judge. He is righteous. And you need to be in accordance. We need to be in accordance with his word because we're not going to be judged by the religion you're a part of. You're not going to be judged by what they taught at the seminar. You're not going to be judged by none of that. We will be judged by what we teach, but you have to understand and your beliefs have to be in line with the word of God. God gave us his yeah. word for a reason. When the devil came at Jesus, Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus himself quoted the word of God, and that is how he overcame the devil. We overcome the devil with truth because the yeah. devil is a liar. And if you don't know the word, the enemy is going to be able to play with you your whole life. He's going to be able to send deception and delusions to you, and he's going to get your mind off in, in wrong doctrine. But you need to understand the word of God is accurate. And if you begin reading and meditating the word of God day and night, and you just let the word of God become a part of you, especially the New Testament, you just, just behold Jesus and see who Jesus is and see what the word says and underline, highlight stuff, fall in love with God, become a student of the Father, begin to see who he is. And God will begin to do something in you that is beyond explanation. You cannot explain it. It's not an act. It's who you are. We are who we are because of the grace of God. It's nothing we've done. All we do is surrender ourselves to him and we fellowship with him. We read his word. We worship. We fast. We pray in tongues. You have to pray in the Holy Ghost. You got him. Whatever you're dealing with, it doesn't matter. You can lock You know you can lock yourself away and you can pray for 10 hours in tongues. Hallelujah. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. In his spirit, he utters divine mysteries, but his mind is unfruitful. Well, I don't believe in that. You don't believe in the word of God. Yeah. It's not what you believe. It's what the word of God says. Amen. Whatever the word of God says, I believe it. When I pray, it says, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself in the love of God. Praying in the Holy Ghost helps keep you in the love of God and it builds you up. So if you're feeling down, it's because your spirit man needs to be edified. And if you're not using what God gave you and then you wonder why the enemy is just beating you down all the time because you're not coming to God based on his word. Your relationship with God is not based on truth. It's based on man's precepts and doctrines of devils when we need to repent and we need to say, Jesus, who are you? If, I, if, I'm, in, if I'm in any error, Lord, show me who you are. If I'm deceived... Is religion your God or is Jesus your Savior? Because if Jesus is your Savior, Jesus withstood the religious spirit. It was the religious men and false religion that crucified Jesus. But if you really love the Father, like in, in John 8, he said that you're of your father, the devil. He was a liar. There's no truth in him. They said, our father's not the devil. He said, if your father was God, who you claim that he is, you would love me because I came from the Father. And I'm going back to the Father. But you do not love me, and I came from God, and I really do know God. So you're claiming that you love the Father, but you're really serving your Father. And he was telling the religious man, your Father is the devil. Your heart is not right. And, 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 and the Lord, the good thing is, the Lord will purify our hearts. We come to God as we are, no matter what you're in. It doesn't matter what you're in, where you're at, it does not matter. Jesus loves you. He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. While you are in your sin, you can be sinning right now. And Jesus loves you. 
And as born-again believers, we have to tell the world that Jesus loves them. Stop being a closet Christian and tell people that Jesus loves them and that Jesus died for them. Because the love of God can't possibly be in you, but you don't tell others that Jesus died for them. It's impossible. You cannot watch people go to hell without it bothering your born-again yeah. human spirit. Yeah, that's right. And um, we, we got to realize that our minds will never understand the spiritual things. This, this is a fight. This is a spiritual warfare, not against flesh and blood. We got to realize our minds will never understand, well, this whole praying in tongues and the Holy Spirit and God, this and the other. But when you start applying the Word of God and by faith doing these things, man, it becomes so much more real. You start realizing, wow, it, there's a lot of demonic activity going on. You can cast devils out. When you get a lot of pressure of lust, of pride, of jealousy, and you just get so, oh man, what's, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, it's crazy. Cast that devil out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's partially flesh, and the devil knows, that's why he's sending, he's, he's sending more, more of that pressure onto you, because he knows that's a stronghold of yours, but, it, but he's amplifying the problem. Tell him to go in Jesus' name. Devil, you gotta go now in Jesus' name. Call him out like it is, in Jesus' mighty name, and start worshiping God, Hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. I worship you. I thank you, God. I am a son. I glorify you in perfect love. Cast out all fear. When you start worshiping God, all devils have to go because they tremble at his presence. They get freaked out. They run in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You tell them to go by the authority that is given you by God. No devil can harm you in Jesus' mighty name. And when you begin to apply these things, praying in tongues, fasting, spending time worshiping and glorifying Jesus, hallelujah, meditating the Word of God and you start beginning to see all these things that are there is, is for us. And the light and love of God begins to grow on the inside of us to where we can't but love our neighbors. We can't but forgive those that have offended us. Forgive them. And that's a big problem in the body of Christ is unforgiveness. Oh yeah, I forgave that person, but I don't ever want to see that person again. How, how many of us have that? I know I have that. And I might still have a little bit of some of that inside of me. But as we continue seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those dirty things on the inside of us fall off. Because we allow him to, to fill in those empty areas and hurt areas with his love and his truth. And you begin to honestly, sincerely from your heart, forgive your neighbor. Forgive your family. Forgive those that might have hurt you. And it is amazing. It is beautiful. Walking with God is amazing. You think that you have an idea of, well, I have these goals and dreams and this is what I want to do with my life. That's great. That's God. And God will still love you till the end. He's proud of you, right? But when we give our lives over to God and say, Lord, I choose to be a humble servant whose life is not his own. I choose to follow after you. And how do you choose? Hmm. By spending time with God which makes you into a disciple, a disciplined follower of Christ. You start spending time with God and his dreams and visions and ideas and wisdom begin to flow out of you and you, you begin to know direction, where to go, what to do, what to say, because you have peace on the inside of you. You have peace and, that, and that, that for, therefore you go and do what he tells you to do. And his voice on the inside of you, your new man, your new nature, it begins to get stronger and louder and you know what to do in every situation. Because that is our God, and He is good. <laughs> and the thing is, even I am today learning of how good our God is, and I will continue to learn that till I die. Why? Is because we think we know God is good. Oh yeah, God is good. He is amazing, this and that. You have no idea. Hey, and I want to say this with pride, I, I don't either. But I'm beginning to know so much more than I've ever before because I'm spending time with Him. I'm realizing who He really is. My Father is God. So is your Father, is God. And the only way is through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God has a big plan for you and, and all of us that follow after him. It is amazing. It is crazy. It is bigger than any kind of ideas that you might have had or I have. Jesus Christ has a big plan for us. Hallelujah. It is real. It is amazing. It is good. And Lord God, I just pray your presence just fall down right now and begin to touch the viewers. Begin to fall down here. I thank you for your anointing, Holy Spirit. Begin to just rock the lives of the people that are watching this. Begin to rock them, Holy Spirit. Begin to give them directions and wisdom and, and, and what to do with their lives. When to spend time with you. 
wake up an hour earlier before work and spend time with you. Stay up a little an hour later at night and spend time with you. Or right after work, find the time. You're not the president. <laughs> Your whole day's not not occupied. You can find time. If you really truly honestly love God, you can find time. And trust me, it goes a long way. So I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do and you, what you are doing in their lives. I thank you right now for your anointing that is touching them right now. Receive it. Say, Lord, I receive. I want more of you, Jesus. I want to live for you because I know you have bigger, better plans for me. Why? Because the word of God says it. The word of God says you are important. How much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to them that ask them and give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? God wants to bless you. Quit thinking I ain't worth it. I did this. I did that. Stop living in the past. Live for today. Live for right now. Lord, I choose to repent. Lord, I choose to follow after you. I choose to let go of all these things I've been hanging on to. God, help me. I know it's hard. It's the struggle. My mind, and, and, and I still feel like going out there and smoking that cigarette or whatever. Just say, no, you know what? I am done right now. I am done. By your strength, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Keep going to him. He's our doctor. Quit trying to think that you're not holy enough, this and that. I've tried this and that. God, how can God love me? God loves you. He, Jesus is our doctor. And we're going to keep running to him. And, and the more you keep running to him, the more you will start breaking free from those strongholds and those those stop captivity. And you will break free and, if you and run free. If you it's amazing. Know, if you don't know Jesus, nothing we say is going to make a lot of sense. So to say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe in you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross. I receive you into my heart right now as my Lord and Savior. And then say, Father God, fill me right now with the Holy Spirit and give me the ability to speak in other tongues. And he'll fill you right now where you're at. You must be born again. Accept Jesus into your heart. Ask him into your heart. Say, right now, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost and give me this prayer language that I can just spend hours praying and praying and praying and your Holy Spirit can change me. In Jesus' name, we love you. Thanks for watching. God bless. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.